Hello everyone, welcome to The Social Club. This week's guest is none other than Peter Ped McPartland. He's going to be talking Player of the Week, FA Cup semi-final draw. <laughs> but what if Arsenal have a terrible season and win the Europa League? And Tottenham have a good season and don't win anything? It'll be like last season. Yeah. That, that hangover will continue for Tottenham. Yeah. I think that's why they have to win a trophy this season. And as the battle hots up, who is going to be this year's Player of the Year? It's sound that you've just scored four goals against Watford, but where were you last week when Liverpool really needed you to score at Old Trafford? Where were you? <laughs> but before all that, a quick wrap-up of this weekend's action. First up, Galatasaray fans, they handled Tolga Sigerci's 94th minute miss in the 0-0 draw in the Intercontinental Derby with Fenerbahce with typical grace, class and calm. <laughs> Katie Hopkins was introduced to a viral Liverpool song. No, not that one. This one. Not for me. Sitting in the mosque is where I want to be. No, no, Sticking with the theme of music, Pierre Emerick Aubameyang. Yeah, he really likes, really likes his own song. Aubameyang. Cristiano Ronaldo scored four against Girona, taking his hat-trick tally to 50 in his career, and he's now scored 17 goals in his last eight games. Sam Allardyce was lucky to sample his favourite childhood delicacy. And Mark Hughes helped Southampton book a place in the semi-finals of the FA Cup and the ugly inside, my word. They were there to celebrate it. Okay, then, for all the latest in football news and some of the mad stuff as well, I get to at Ball Street on Twitter. But you know what? What's most important right here, right now? Ped. Hello. Welcome to the social club. It's all shiny and new and clean and slightly less dusty. Mr. Sheen. <laughs> Let's get stuck into it then. It. First topic of the day, FA Cups, the semi-final draws have been made. I want to know, in your opinion, which of the managers needs the FA Cup the most? Pochettino, 100% needs. 100%? 100% needs to win the FA Cup. Why? Because a lot of people are talking about this Spurs team and how well they've done and, and Kane and, and, and Deli Ali and they've got to get a trophy in the bank. It's as simple as that. You know, you look at the other you look at the other managers involved and is it as important for them? Can they cope without a trophy this season? You look at Mourinho, it's a bad season for him, even if he doesn't win an FA Cup. Yeah. For, for Tottenham, if they win an FA Cup, it's a good season. Yeah. And they need that first one to get over the line. You know, and that might just keep the walls from the door for the likes of Kane because they're coming. You're right, people are going to start knocking and players have, look, they've got short lifespans in mm. the game. They need to win things. If you're someone like a Harry Kane as you, or a Deli Alley, and yeah. you're right at the top of it, you, you've only got, what do you get, five or six years in that prime, you know, you're able to deliver, able to play to the best of your ability. You want to rack up as much silverware as possible in that time. I think though, I think on the Pochettino pressure, I think that's as much, I think that's us. I think that's mm -hmm. us externally putting that pressure on because we love it. Because I can't stand, I, I can't stand the fact that he seems to be escaping pressure. They should have been challenging for the title this season and no one's talking about that. And their fans all seem dead happy. I speak to Flav and he's fine. But he's happy just watching decent football. How dare he? But isn't that why, <laughs> why he needs to win it? Because that pressure's got to come from internal sources. Because let's yeah. be honest, right? They're playing at home. You know, Arsenal, Arsenal are having a terrible season. Yeah. But what if Arsenal have a terrible season and win the Europa League? And Tottenham have a good season and don't win anything. It'll be like last season. Yeah. That that hangover will continue for Tottenham. Yeah. I think that's why they have to win a trophy this season. Go through the list. I think Conte's getting sacked regardless. So I don't think he needs it. I don't think it changes his no. position at the club in any way, shape or form. Mark Hughes, he's got more important 
things to do. You've yeah. got to think. You've got to keep Southampton up first and foremost. The last thing they wanted to do a Wigan. Well, I'm, look, don't get me wrong. In fact, let us know, uh, Southampton fans, if you're watching, would you take relegation in an FA Cup? Any Wigan fans? I'd be interested to know whether you were happy with the fact that that happened in in your lives or whatever. Yeah. Mourinho, I think he needs the FA Cup because he needs to break even this season. I don't think it's mm. a good season for Man United. If they finish second and they win the FA Cup, by all standards, from 99% of football clubs. It's a very, very good season. Yeah. That'd be a good season for Liverpool this season, but for Manchester United, I don't think it is. Dear please, if, Man United fans, if you disagree, let us know in the comments. I think he needs that just so we can continue the whole look I delivered sort of where whilst I was rebuilding. But isn't he the best manager to bat it off if they don't? Be yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. you know, that, that that's what he's brilliant at, he, he, and that's why the press love him. He's brilliant at batting that off. And, and also, if they don't win a trophy, he'll use that. And sometimes I actually think Mourinho revels in, in, in not winning trophies because it strengthens his position to go and get yeah. those players that he wants. Yeah. I don't think he'll be particularly asked. The only issues is, that on the because I agree, I think it's maybe just that we're starting to see for the first time in England, I think, not just the press having a go at Mourinho mm. because... I th it feels like the fans are starting to react to that, whereas normally he draws all the attention on himself, which he's doing, yeah. except I don't, it's not dispersing. Their fans are a little bit unsettled, and here's the thing. It happened with Arsene Wenger, mm. it, and you mentioned the expression, keeps the walls from the door. It does a piece of silverware, dis distracts from a lot of the the, 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 the ales around that, around that football club. So I personally, I think it's a toss-up between Mourinho and Pochettino, who needs it the most. I think as a pure individual, I think Mourinho needs it most. But as a football club, I think Spurs. Yeah, I think Spurs needed the most. Before we crack on, next topic coming up. Anagram, going to give you a clue. Once again, it's two words. It's not. It's it's one name. It's the name of a footballer. Simple as that. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. It was me thinking it was a transformer. Well, yeah. Uh, I thought it was sound screen. Sound screen? Yeah. You've got a shower, shower screen, the transformer. <laughs> I just, I haven't even looked at the letters. I, was... I mean, it might be. Spoilers. If, if it is, then that's the best outside outside the box shot that there's been. Not... Since that Newcastle fan at the weekend who scored the uh, crossbar it's... challenge it's at not... Sunderland. Okay, after this four goals of the weekend for Liverpool, the player of the year talk is hot enough. I think personally, right here, right now, it's between two players. It's Mohamed Salah and Kevin De Bruyne. And look, this is where my club bias has come in, despite the fact that I tried to hide it with random Eastern European shirts. Mohamed Salah, for me, has to be the number one shout to win that award. The goals... The amount of money we paid, the impact that he's had this season. I think Salah's just been a phenomenal breakout star this season. Wouldn't it have been amazing if Lukaku had had a fantastic season as well? Why? Because then it would have been Salah, De Bruyne <laughs> yes. and Lukaku. Yeah. Okay, yeah. It yeah. would have been the season of, of Mourinho rejects. It, it's, it's a difficult one. Listen, Salah's had an absolutely amazing season, but what... It de all depends on what comes out of at the end of the season. If Kevin De Bruyne you know, wins the league, then... If even if he's been slightly slightly worse than Salah, does he deserve it more because he's helped his team win the league? Or do we go absolutely that it is a personal trophy and he's been the best player? I think the neck and neck. No, what do you do? What do you do? You treat it as a, you know. Let's I, forget that we don't understand the criteria, <laughs> and let's just go for what you would. What would you judge it on? If you had them, if, if you had those two guys to judge it on, who would you be? If those players were so neck and neck, I'd have to I'd have to look at who had won trophies at the end of the season so that would just put Kevin De Bruyne just slightly over mm -hmm. um, but that's not to say you know, Mo Salah hasn't been absolutely amazing this season because yeah, Salah's been absolutely ph phenomenal but my caveat to that is it's sound that you've just scored four goals against Watford but where were you last week when Liverpool really needed you to score at Old Trafford he's, where were you he was there uh... Where, where was he? He's in Ashley Young's pocket Ap <laughs> apparently that's where he was but that's not me being an ass. no that's me just... No, no not at all. No, not no, at no. all. Let's see how many more times he shows up to the end of the season in those big games. Because at the end of the day, for Liverpool to win a trophy this season, he's going to have to show up massively yeah. in those big games. We've not really talked about Harry Kane and we've maybe been a bit 
Again, maybe a bit disrespectful not to bring Kane into this. I think in any other normal season, the goal return from Harry Kane, and we'll see when, when he comes back and what yeah. he comes back as after the injury, of course. But he's been a phenomenal goal scorer, but that's all he's been. And you can look at... I think his all, all-round game's got better this season now, Kane. I really do. Mm. I think he's become a, a much better footballer this season. But again, I think sometimes we forget about the players that are so consistent. It's 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 a it's a weird trait that we have in, I think in this country that we almost go, well we know they're really, really good. So mm. We like the new shiny things in this yeah, country. Yeah, well, no, you're right. You're dead right on that. You know, because he's English and he's a bit boring. You know what I mean? He's boring. He's, he got a massive, boring. he's got a massive tongue, so I'm sure he's very exciting in various areas in his life. But the thing for me is just about the the all round contribution of the of the players, those teams. So it is his all round contribution to 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 what he's doing on on the pitch. And I think just personally, I think just edges him. Well, he's an X factor in what he does straight away. Is he intimidates teams before they've played them. So straight away you're getting he, he elevates Liverpool for me because he just creates this fear factor, yeah. and then what that does is then that says to teams, well, we need to double mark him, yeah. and then that leaves other people free. And he, he he's a very intelligent player. It'll, it'll be it'll be really interesting to see what his career path is. Yeah, it'll, it'll be well, very the, interesting. I, I think there's a I think there's a degree to which people go on, oh, this will be a one season thing for him. Whereas you see his time at Roma, particularly, he's yeah. just gotten better and better. better season. You don't come from Italy to be this good in your, your first season back in the Premier League. It very rarely happens like that. It, people, people come from say, even with yeah. his pace, even with lots of pace, do struggle with it. The thing that's really interesting about this is Kevin De Bruyne has got 11 goals and 19 assists in all competitions this season. He's playing centre mid and attacking mid, pretty much a 50-50 split. So he's playing deep and he's managing to get that return. The only thing I, I, I mean, I'm not. I know we're talking about the future. It's going to be interesting with 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 Salah though, because I think the interesting thing about him is I know a lot of Liverpool fans and I think a lot of pundits might be going overboard out and comparing them to Messi and the likes of Ronaldo. Is this not the way people talked about Hazard as well, though? And it's going to be interesting to see whether he can step away from just being a player like Hazard, who yeah. is almost almost at that level, yeah. but isn't quite. Whether he can take that step and become genuine world-class. Because I think that's that's hamper plays in the Premier League in the, yeah. last, in the last 10 years. Did he have to make that move? Do you have to go to Barcelona? Do you have to go to Barcelona and be able to to become one of those players? And I think that's what stopped Hazard. I don't know whether that stopped Hazard moving away, but I think I think timing is everything in football. And there's a point where you need to elevate yourself. And it'll just be interesting to see whether Salah can become one of those players who can elevate himself and be go, go to the top table and whether he can do that at Liverpool. Uh, fantastic. Let us know your thoughts. And who do you think is ahead in the race for Player of the Year? Is it Salah? Is it De Bruyne? Or is it someone else that we have glaringly overlooked? Please do let us know those names and reasoning in the comments below. OK, Player of the Week time then. The bit of the show where we pick who we think was the player or performer or whatever of the week. And then you vote to decide whether you agree with us or not. A Cardi. Mauro Icardi. Yeah. There's very few games to pick from. No, yeah, yeah. Very few Sh- players. And, and, you know, not many people who also scored four goals in a game I like Icardi. Sh- my first pick would have been Charlie Adam. Um, <laughs> Was that a red card? Yeah. Really? He got sent out. Well, then. <laughs> Everton won. Uh, Jenk Tosin, again. Wait, uh, is that a massive oversight for us not to put Jenk Tosin in there? He didn't score four, and everyone else on your list scored four, apart, apart from, from Mark Hughes. Apart from Mark Hughes, who came in and got Southampton into a semi finals of the FA Cup. Listen, he, sc- he scored. A first half hat-trick. 14 minutes. You know what I like about this is that he scored against Sampdoria, who he played for, and none of this, like... Yeah. It was like... It doesn't happen anywhere else. Yeah. We're just so genteel yeah. and gentrified in this yeah. country. Oh, I can't celebrate against you. It's amazing Robbie Keane got to celebrate against anyone, really, isn't it? Well, now he's celebrating against his boyhood team's... In India, of course, so, <laughs> doubtless. I think the other obvious shout here: Cristiano Ronaldo and, and Mohamed Salah. And I will go against the grain uh, and not put forward Mo Salah. I'll leave that up to you to vote in the poll in the corner if you think it should be Mo Salah. Cristiano Ronaldo. Look, it, there was talk what three weeks ago, four, you know, a month ago maybe. I was saying, is Ronaldo past it? You know, look, he's, he's comfortably in his thirties, which I can really do. Comfortable. Um, eventually. Mm. Both he and Messi are going to start to drop off a little bit, and then you think, oh, maybe it's this season. No. 17 goals in eight, his last eight games for Ronaldo, four at the weekend against, albeit against Girona. 
He's a good player. He's good, He's isn't good he? Footballer. He's a good player, that Ronaldo. Well, well, what's good about him and Messi is they both tinkered with their positions and yeah. are now pl- pl- slightly playing slightly different positions. A bit like Wayne Rooney at Evan. Um, <laughs> is he playing at the moment, Diaz? Basically, he's playing all right. Damn. Fantastic. And who do you think was playing up a form of the week? We've gone for the four from Mark Hughes, Mario Cardi, and Mo Salah. He's <laughs> not even a player. No, no, don't. St- don't. So let's not start this again. This is new social club. We need to get off on the right Perform foot. Perform it. Look, look I need, all I needed to do, really, was just change the title and then change... Look, you... There you four poll in the corner of the screen, vote. Or if you want to vote for someone else, let us know in the comments and expand on anything. If you agree or disagree with us putting forward a Cardi and Ronaldo, feel free. That's what the comments box is for. Do interact with the show. I'll be around in the comments as well to interact back. Other than that, look, if you enjoyed the show, if you're pleased to have Ped back, because there is no Ped, no party on Social Club, drop a like on this video and subscribe to the Ball Street channel by clicking the logo on the screen right now. Ask the Club comes later this week.